Welcome everybody. We're here in my farm in Nova Scotia and today I want to talk to you about something that keeps recirculating constantly and it's it's quite amazing actually because I think that it's it just, it kind of ebbs and flows. It comes and people sell, you know, says their opinion and then it kind of goes away and then it comes back. And that's the uh, topic of essential fatty acids and omega-3s. So what I wanted to talk about today is, again, phytoplankton. And there is, I'm going to try to talk to you a little bit differently today. And that's that when I think about phytoplankton, there are lots of different sources. There's lots of ways of getting it. And I've done a whole video that you can actually watch on the specifics of how I got the phytoplankton that that I finally chose, which is non-GMO, which is filtered by the ocean, which is a thousand percent sustainable because I am anal about using anything that is uh, going to take away the food source from anywhere or uh, be detrimental to any other animals. I'm, I, I just can't fathom any other animal suffering, whether it's a, a, a tiger from the rainforest or something from the ocean in order for us to make our, our dogs and cats health, healthier. So it was a high priority for me and you can watch the other, the other uh, video that I have on phytoplankton and how I chose it and how, how it is sustainable, absolutely non-GMO and completely filtered from heavy metals from the ocean. But what I wanted to really talk about, which is a little bit um, out there maybe, is that we have, it's, I, it's, I don't care anymore. Maybe that's what I wanna say. I don't care about AVCO standards. I don't care about Health Canada, FDA. I care about uh, empirical proof. I care about knowing what I see firsthand. And what the really cool thing about phytoplankton is, is that there's no guesswork. Phytoplankton has been around for millions of years. It's not a new essential fatty acid. It's not a new omega-3. It's not a new way of processing something. It's not a new, it's not new. It's ancient. It's, it's millions of years old and it has a, a completely amazing track record of feeding still to this day the ocean. It is the main food source for the ocean. If phytoplankton was um, vulnerable, if phytoplankton was, hmm, if phytoplankton was fragile, if phytoplankton was not able to com continue to evolve to be able to handle mercury, to be able to handle uh, radiation, to be able to handle all that stuff, it would be dead a long time ago and our oceans would be dead because without phytoplankton, we don't have an ocean. So what that speaks to me is that it has more research than we could actually do in our lifetime supporting its ability to not only uh, uh, feed the ocean, but to make the ocean thrive, to give us 80% of our oxygen in the world, to do some pretty incredible things. Therefore, it has to be looked at, again, as I always say, as a totally different entity. And it's for the people out there that want to feed their dog something that is beyond whole. When we talk about whole foods, when we talk about feeding nutrition that's complete, you can't get any completer. And everything that we're trying to find omega-3 with, with what, you know, sea animals, sea fit, or fish, and whatever we're taking from the ocean to try and replicate omega-3, the way every single one of those animals, mammals, fish get omega-3 is because of phytoplankton. So I sell phytoplankton, I promote our brand of phytoplankton because it took me probably five years to, to source out the one I was comfortable with. But I don't wanna be the only person telling you this. So I'm going to actually flip it over to 
um, a person then called David Wolf, who is a really, really recognized expert in whole food supplementations. He's been around for a very long time and maybe you could just listen to him because he, is, because he has a really great way of explaining to it, explaining it as well. And it's not just me. Okay, I hope you enjoy it. What about marine phytoplankton? I mean, this is the work of Jacques Cousteau. Jacques Cousteau essentially was the guy who brought to the world the knowledge that the entire ecosystem of the world is dependent on marine phytoplankton. That they are really the producers of oxygen in the atmosphere. They produce sulfur in the rain that then goes around the planet and gets into the trees and creates the pliability and the flexibility of all the plants and trees in the world. They are the producers of the proteins that feed the most incredible animals in this world, which is very likely the whales. You know, the whales produce the biggest nervous system in the world of any organism, and yet their food is just this small, tiny, 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 tiny little microorganism on microalgae called marine phytoplankton. And that the oils that create the nervous system, the omega-3 fatty acids, the DHA, the EPA, these are found in marine phytoplankton first. So the cod liver oil that comes way down the chain where did it get its omega-3 fatty acids in its liver from? It got it from marine phytoplankton. Where does the whale get all its, marine, all its essential fatty acids from? It gets it from the marine phytoplankton. It is food. It is the very meaning of food. Now, a bunch of scientists got together and thought, well, okay, this all makes sense. Why don't we just start feeding people marine phytoplankton? In fact, let's find the best phytoplankton for p human consumption and started experimenting with bringing marine phytoplankton to human consumption and here's what was found. Marine phytoplankton is very likely the most nutritious food in the world for anybody including us. It contains every known mineral in it. Everything that's needed to support life is present in marine phytoplankton. It contains the um, essential fatty acids, it contains all amino acids, it's a complete protein source. It is um, probably the richest source of chlorophyll going. I mean it's the basis of all chlorophyll. What's going on in those oceans that plankton's converting through the sunlight hitting that ocean, it's converting it into sugars also present in marine phytoplankton. There's another thing that's very powerful here and that is marine phytoplankton contains ATP and GDP and ADP and all of the nucleotides that are actually the energy currencies of our cells. When, when we eat something, we don't just go like, okay, this protein, fat, carbohydrate is suddenly just energy. No, it actually has to go all the way down, broken down to the cellular level, and then each cell has to go, okay, I have to take that protein, that carbohydrate, that fat, and I have to convert it into ATP. I have to change it into an energy currency that we understand at the cellular level. Well, that energy currency is already present in marine phytoplankton. Therefore, here's the effect. You take in the marine phytoplankton and you have instant energy. Your body doesn't have to do anything. It doesn't have to, doesn't have to do a currency exchange. So the effect of that is you have instant energy and no stimulation. That's ridiculously powerful. It means that you can have a, an upping of energy at the cellular level through every cell in your body, but you don't have any stimulation, meaning there's no crash later. We, are, we have been so programmed in the past to believe that if we have an up, then we have to have a down. That's a that's a bunch of garbage. That's exactly true if you're eating like chemicals and you know cardboard, soggy cardboard or whatever. I don't even know what people are eating anymore. I think some some kind of cross between chemicals, soggy cardboard, and some kind of factory farmed, um, hormone laden, um, cancerous growth of some sort. That's pretty much like dinner. And you know once you once you're off that, it's like you can actually get higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. And it just keeps going and going and going. And there is no down because it's not a drug. It's actually a food. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I thought it was super cool when I found it because my father actually knew Jacques Cousteau. And I always love little signs from the universe when it's like, oh my gosh, that was my dad's friend. And um, I always think that my dad's up there helping me out with all the stuff. And I just, I think it's just nice to be able to get another person's um, take on on things and not just I never want to be the one that thinks that that I can 
tell you guys that I know everything because I absolutely don't and I'm learn learning things all the time. So it was really nice to find that little clip and I hope you enjoyed it.